Okay, Doc. Doc, uh, I'm a huge fan of your video series and very grateful for both your insight and your understanding of people's choices. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I live in Australia and have been unable to find a doctor or an endocrinologist willing to assist me when being upfront and honest about my situation. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, it happens a lot, Doc. Firstly, I am 32 years old. For years, I competed in powerlifting, during which time I heavily used and abused various uh, AAS without breaks or much regard to my health. When I retired from competing about two years ago, I stopped all steroids and ancillary drugs, hoping my natural production would return. I spent 12 months dealing with the usual symptoms, no libido, depression, which required the use of an SSRI, major fatigue, etc. I got frequent blood tests in this time, all which showed my test total and free to be below the lower threshold. I visited numerous medical professionals, all who lectured me and refused to help my situation because I was honest about what I knew had caused my condition. Okay, oh, no. I can't help but stop in the middle of that one. That, that to me is just that's... retarded. I, to me, that's like saying to someone, okay, you know, you're an alcoholic. Uh, you totally destroyed your liver. It's cirrhotic, okay, but because you did it of your own accord, I'm you're not going to treat you. your liver? Yeah. I don't, I mean, am, am I wrong? I don't, no, I don't understand that one. So that one, that oh, one really to yourself, so suffer my now. rear end when I hear stuff like that. <laughs> I, I really don't understand that. I understand, you know, if someone's still an alcoholic, but even then you go, okay, well, obviously, you know, oh, human, a human. lot of people think of it as a disease or whatever it is. You still got to treat the liver, man. You can't, well, you know what? I mean, we help people that are about to jump off a building because they're suicidal. What do you just don't help them because it's their own volition to oh, jump up again, so I mean, that's, may as well just save you the trouble. I don't know. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> sorry for the, the, the digression, but that one really doesn't make any sense. Um, uh, okay, so after receiving no help, I eventually put myself on self-prescribed HRT of one milliliter of testosterone and anthate every seven days. My question is, while things have greatly improved, I am now trying to have children with my partner and have no detectable levels of sperm. Again, I have visited with multiple medical physicians, none of which are either educated enough or simply willing to assist me due to my past. Is the damage caused by my previous heavy AAS use irreversible or is there something that may help? I have heard HCG may work, but have no experience or knowledge with using it. Thank you, Jeremy Smith from Australia. Okay, so... Um, First of all, it is unusual in my experience for someone that age, 32, to not have their their numbers bounce back, okay? After one year. I tell, yeah, after one year, yeah. especially. I mean, with evolution, you know, I give this uh, monologue in my practice often, you know, 300 years ago, life expectancy was 28 years old. So I get it that the testicles may not jump back online because, you know, as Mother Nature sees it, you know, what's the use of giving you the ability to reproduce? If, if you don't have a kid by the time you're 14, because you, you know, you're, you, you're leaving one behind when you're dying at 28 and they're 14, and they better start reproducing right, right away and hope they survive with the tribe. I mean, what's the use of, you know, 300 years ago, that's not even, that's not even a beginning of a blink in terms of evolution. So, you know, I get why we might find it difficult to restore testicular function or to even see it after age 28. But, you know, that having been said, I, I've seen... Um, I've seen a, a, a gentleman in my practice um, father twins at age 39 while on TRT. A, a gentleman 63 years old father twins while on TRT. Wow. We backed down his TRT by 100 milligrams. He was on 200 megs per, per ml per week of testosterone cypionate and added HCG three times a week and he fathered twins. Wow. So, um, and by the way, um, I'm not naming names. I don't mean to be crass about this at all, but people go, well, there's somebody out there who goes, well, how do you know it was his? You know, that's impossible, 66. <laughs> okay, no, but this is serious. Again, not to be crass, really yeah. at all. But um, <clears throat> got into a, uh, you know, uh, well, got divorced eventually. <clears throat> Paternity issues, all that kind of stuff. Proved that they were his child. So wow. for all the smart alecks out there, or the or the doubting Thomases, okay, it is proof that you know, he, he did uh, 
yeah. uh, wow. you know, father of children is 63. So um, in this case, it, again, it is unusual. What I tell people is it's typical that there's a physiological, there's, there's a psychological issue. Nobody wants to come off and feel crappy uh, once they've been on TRT. And uh, that's usually the limiting factor. But I mean, at 32, three to six months tops as usual. Um, again, this is why medicine, you can't just talk about only usual and, and, and deal with probabilities. This is, this is rare. Uh, so um, let's get to the solution. Definitely, I would, I would use HCG, and again, uh, unfortunately, you're probably going to have to get off of, uh, uh, and boy, it sounds like I'm giving advice again, but you know, again, I'm, I'm, you got to go see a medical doctor. All right. <clears throat> this is informational, guys. They don't want to talk to him, though. But, uh, well, yeah, no, I know. So, That's but, the problem. I just have to... That's why he's calling you. Make sure I'm not... <laughs> I, I'm not yeah. I, I can't... Uh, I can't give curbside service here and, yeah. uh, you know, Your best advice. prescribe over yeah. the, yeah, yeah, over the internet, um, or, or give medical advice over the internet. But, but, but what, what normally we would want to do is, uh, actually see what adding HCG will do because of what I explained earlier, you know, you got to get those lytic cells functioning again, the ones that produce testosterone and you don't need a whole lot, but you got to have some endogenous production there to get the Sartoli cells to start creating sperm. Doesn't have to be a whole lot, like I said, but those have to get functional. Now, by overriding the system, meaning um, when your testosterone levels are high enough or your estrogen levels are, are high enough, your pituitary is not going to send a signal. ACG is, is, is an analog of LH. It looks like LH to the testicles. It looks like luteinizing hormone. So we can say, hey, lytic cells, let's get going here, whether you're on testosterone replacement therapy or not. That's usually the first route we take. Why? Because you don't want to feel terrible while you're trying to get this done. So you try that first, you know, depending on your spouse and how long you're willing to wait, what you guys agree to, let's try that for a certain time period. Okay, nothing's happening. Then we go the next route where you might drop it down, like I said, with this uh, older gentleman to 100 milligrams per ml um, per week of testosterone sipionate along with the ACG. See if that brings the, the levels up um, over Again, whatever you're willing to try, I generally would say at least uh, three to six months, you know. Uh, and then last resort, you go, okay, stop the testosterone completely, the, the, the replacement therapy, and go hardcore with just trying to get the testicles to produce. Now, I'm making it sound overly simplified, trust me. Um, I like infertility medicine with all due respect to the doctors who deal with it, including me. I deal with fertility because of obviously the relationship with all this, but we really don't have it all that nailed. So I jokingly refer to it as, you know, witch doctoring because, you know, some things work for some people really, really well. And what you expect to work doesn't work at all for another couple. And, you know, there's always, you just go, how did that happen? It's very individualized. And, and, I, and I mean that really jokingly and with respect to all of us that are trying to get people uh, fertile, but it's, it's tough sometimes. Um, the other issue here is, uh, is the Sartoli cell getting a signal? It needs the prime from the lytic cells, but you know, FSH, follicle stimulating hormone has to be in play too. Otherwise, even if the lytic cell is working, the Sartoli cell uh, won't produce. So we got to check LH and FSH levels too via, you know, assays, you know, from drawn blood. And uh, there's a um, HMG which can be used, which helps stimulate directly the Sartoli cell also if the pituitary isn't doing the job. Typically, the problem is not, uh, well, let me just put it this way. Typically, just adding HCG and getting lytic cells going will restore fertility. But sometimes you have to add the HMG. And the problem is HCG is relatively cheap, much more so than HMG, which is relatively expensive. I mean, if you look online, uh, I think these days you're talking about, uh, and depending on if you want to be aggressive with the dose or not, you're talking about 150 bucks, you know, per injection, wow. as opposed to with ACG. I mean, the source that we, we get ACG from, uh, it's $58 for 11,000 IU. Yeah. And if you do the math, you know, you're doing 500 IU yeah. in this case for fertility, you're going to be maybe a little aggressive. So you might do 500 IU every day or a thousand every other day, something like that. 
um, you, know, you can see there's still a big difference in price. So uh, those are the tricks we have, if you will, for restoring uh, testicular function and, and more importantly, uh, sperm. Yeah. And uh, you know, I wouldn't beat yourself up about the the uh, anabolic you use at 32. Um, well, first of all, what's the use of beating yourself up? And, and we've proven that um, you know, mindset, especially with women, can have a huge effect on whether or not you get fertile or you, uh, you know, will conceive anyway, for sure. So, you know, positive attitude, do what it is. I mean, he may say, hey, let's just go for it. Cold turkey off the tee, uh, make an agreement, the two of them, that, you know, he's going to be a little fatigued and maybe a little bit, uh, you know, grumpy for a while, but it's all for the purpose of just going, you know, straight to the most uh, effective manner. And, uh, again, you can throw some HMG in there from the get-go, too, probably wait first and try the HCG. And again, numbers first. Uh, at 32, the odds of our finding something with the pituitary, meaning like a, a microadenoma, like there's a tumor there, a usually benign tumor, uh, that usually happens much earlier. It's probably just a matter of, um, uh, you know, the pituitary because he, uh, sort of rewired the soft wiring of the system for so long and again chronicity of use is more important than the heavy dose that um, you know the the, the the pituitary has a new thermostatic setting mm -hmm. and it's you know it's, again a 30 year old pituitary should be working fine and presumably you know his thyroid is doing the job but it may take some time and some nudging to say no 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 even though there's no testosterone um, naturally um, you know you, you need to start sending a signal. And, and what I'm getting at is we may find that his LH is two, okay, and he's got no testosterone. You go, well, what's going on here? Well, that's called secondary hypogonadism, uh, and that's normally caused oftentimes, you, you pick that up, you know, in a, like a 21, 22-year-old that has these issues uh, because of a, a tumor there. But in this case, uh, this is quite... Uh, frequently found in guys that, as he admits, you know, have abused steroids. Mm -hmm. uh, and it takes a, a little bit longer for things to come back online. But I, I, again, upshot of all this is I would be positive and just, go, you know, there, there's definitely a, a path to go down and, and eventually, despite uh, or, or having, you know, probably have to do some gnashing of teeth, he'll, he'll, he'll get his fertility back. Awesome. Just got to hang in there. Thanks, Doc.